Ha <laughs> how's going guys? My name is Righteous Nikki and welcome to another Overmind game. Today I'm going to be showing you Zero Two and mainly because that I actually had a very decent game that I actually saved from a lot of weeks ago. But not only that, but I've been playing a lot of Zero Two to climb uh, my ranks recently. Previously I was playing a lot of Fury Variant, but that changed recently to Zero Two a lot. Because I did finally manage to reach master rank. Uh, I did manage to get to 1800 points, but now I'm uh, around 1000 generally against some wins and losses. But this game in particular is actually a diamond tube. So it's going to be a bit weaker game when it comes to uh, overall gameplay from me, I guess, and from the teams, but. Generally, Zero Two is my main hero from a lot of seasons now, and I'm most comfortable with him. And no, not that uh, I make the greatest moves with him uh, when it comes to, I guess, skills. I don't go for a Vorpal Blade, Vorpal Blade build, so I I cannot make some fl flashy plays. But generally, I have a good mindset of when to engage and how to trade with Zero Two pretty decently. Which, well, helped me to get to master. So, I'm going to be showing you this very cool game. We're going to be playing on Braxus Holdout. Uh, going to be banned Sylvanas and Lucio. Now it's going to be banned on Gul'dan. That's interesting. Now, actually, Zero was the first pick is pretty risky, but I did go for that because they picked the Vava. And I automatically have a good target to engage on. Uh, which Vava is a very squishy target and I know that they are going to pick one support and I didn't know which support but generally if you have a squishy ranged assassin and a support generally have already two solid targets to engage with uh, to engage with a void prison uh, so they're going to go for Oreo which is actually a pretty good choice with a Vava uh, pretty solid support uh, she can get a lot of energy from that and Crystal is always nice to save the Vava from zero to burst uh, we're going to get Diablo to combo with uh, Zero Two, which is going to be awesome. Uh, I'm going to suggest Nazibo here to my teammate. I think Nazibo is generally pretty good for this map, and I, I think to myself, if I put Void Prison and of course Apocalypse Suit is going to land, well, Nazibo can put a Zombie Wall on that Void Prison and throw a lot of spells, which is a good source of damage in my opinion. And generally, Nazibo is good for this map, so I thought it was a good choice. Uh, Brightwing is a Cool support is actually Brightwing is a very nice support with Zero Two because with the Zero Two you can dive deep and Brightwing can teleport on you to ensure your survival. And now it sometimes can backfire and both of you die, but uh, yeah, sometimes you have to take the risk. They're going to go for Sonya. Sonya is great for this map particularly because she can clear a lot of the Zerg wave if if. Their team manages actually to let it uh, go in their direction, the Zerg wave. But not only that, she is one of the best uh, one versus one on the top lane and can just have a pretty good control on that lane as well. Mofirin and Muradin. Now, Mofirin is a pretty nice counter to Zero Two actually with Ward, Silence. Uh, but generally, how I play Zero Two is, is very. Uh, it's my mage build, which is very fast uh, damage dealt return way of playing Zero Two. You're going to see in a moment. They're going to get Muradin, very solid tank, and our last pick is going to be Cassia. Now, I I personally haven't played Cassia versus uh, Sonya, and I'm not really sure who is going to win that matchup. Uh, but, yeah, it seems very interesting. Cassia can negate a lot of the auto attack damage of Sonya, but Sonya actually does a lot of spell damage, so that's pretty interesting. So we're going to actually swap lanes here and try to get a Kill on the uh, Sonya. She's going to get saved by the Morphurian root. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know why our teammates want uh, this lane switch though. Uh, hmm, Cassie is getting stunned. Uh, I didn't show you the first 30 seconds of the video because it was generally uh, the start of the game. Nothing was really said that was important and just wanted to skip you some time wasting I guess uh, but generally I have no idea why uh, the lanes had to be like this generally I'm going to be staying on the bottom for now 
giving some pressure on the Vala as well as sneaking the health regeneration bubble. As a zero two, you can actually do this on this map, which is pretty well not pretty important, but somewhat important because uh, the orbs themselves help you help uh, the lane sustain itself and you being able to steal that is actually a pretty nice thing to have. Uh, ooh, nice engagement on the Diablo. I'm already going extremely well. I'm going to teleport to secure that kill and we're just going to go into the first beacons with a kill down which is going to be a very nice uh, start for us. Now as a zero two, I always try to find the best spot to be at at any certain time. So I see a woman of Furion that is going to contest this uh, beacon and I'm going to try to kill him. I have my blink up, so I'm just going to secure that. Nazivus, I would, I could say maybe saving me one zombie. I'm not really sure if if it if I was being chased by another hero, uh, it probably wouldn't be that good for me. But now I'm getting very heavily engaged by Moradin and Sonia. Chains, but I'm going to blink away. So, you know my mage build with Zero Two. I go for uh, improved cleave and take Grim Task on level four instead of the uh, overtime cleave damage. I think the Grim Task is a superior, superior talent. Now, in most cases, uh, well, not in most, but in every case, it's a very risky talent indeed to take because you lose all stacks. Uh, but one thing you need to know about this talent that can work in your favor as a knowledge is that one, I noticed that if you are close to a team fight and you get a and your team gets a kill, even if you didn't engage in that fight, you are still going to get a stack from the elimination, which is pretty strange. It happened to me once. I was go I was trying to get to my team to help for a fight. They did manage to secure the kill before I came and I got a stack without even uh, dealing any damage to anyone. Uh, so that's pretty strange. Now I went a bit stupid there, trying to finish out the Oreo into a 2 versus 3 scenario. That was just a stupid move from me. Uh, well, I wouldn't say stupid, but I guess I didn't calculate the risk at the time properly. Uh, so... Um, yeah. I'm not sure, sure why, why I wrote this. Mm, beats me. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to contest the bottom beacon with... Eh. Oh, Uriel and Vow are actually here. I'm going to manage to decap that at 98%. Uh, Cassia and Diablo are doing some trades there. Uh, I did again a very stupid blink engage there trying to finish out the Vow. Uh, it's just not enough. Now I'm going to change the position to Sonya because I know that Diablo is going to be there. Oh, Diablo though is going to get uh, engaged by two people. I think they're just going to cap the shrine. Yeah, Vow is there as well. So they're going to secure the first Zerg wave. Actually having 76% is pretty decent. And the first wave generally isn't that scary. Uh, so we're probably going to have a decent time taking care of that, especially with Nazivo. Though I would have loved if we had a bit more teammates. Yeah, Cassia, Cassia is actually coming here to help uh, to clear things out. Now I went for the Wormhole talent, uh, which allows you for these very quick uh, trades with Zero Two and backing offs, which I would say other builds don't allow. Or at least uh, 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 allow, allow it, but you need a lot more ability usage and maneuvering and this way it's far easier with the downside that well uh, sometimes the enemy team is going to figure out your uh, wormhole ending point so they could wait wait you and kill you on your way back anyway I see a working more than there, but I'm going to focus my way up to the Vala. Oreo is sneaking there, but Cassie is going to come. Brightwing is also coming. Uh, Cassie engaging with the damage, and we're going to be able to secure that kill on the Vala. Now, Oreo desperately trying to finish out the Cassia, but I think that was a very bad move. I'm going to try to body block her, and Cassia is going to finish out with the damage. I don't know why there Oreo didn't decide to just back out to the fort. I think that was perfectly possible for her. 
I know if she just got greedy or just decided that her life was just uh, wasted and she would have wanted to secretly secure. I don't know, beats me. I would have probably... Uh, it, actually, I would have probably did one of those two things as well. Uh, anyway, ooh, some very nice follow-up damage from me on the castle there, but... Now Sonya coming on the Brightwing, I'm going to try to be some kind of a body blocker there for the Brightwing so he, I can buy some time for him, but Sonya is just going to do a way too much damage, I'm going to try to back it out there. Um, Diablo is going to get annihilated as well, and we're just going to escape from with a sliver, well not a sliver, but pretty well in general, I'm just going to collect some of those orbs again. Um, both teams got uh, level 10. Almost level 10 for our team. Um, Cassie again trying to do some tra trades, but Brightwing is coming, so that's pretty nice. I have the Void Prison, I also have two stacks on at Grim Task, which gives me 10% ability power. And you would imagine that 10% is already pretty good. Uh, that was actually a pretty good place for a Void Prison. Uh, but unfortunately, neither Diablo nor Zeebo are pretty near here. So we actually have no follow up damage. For that void prison it was actually a perfect opportunity for void prison i saw at least three people that i could have engaged on there uh but i restrained it uh if at least the zebo was here diablo could, could have used uh his apocalypse from the top lane but still i wouldn't risk wasting the void prison and so many uh damage doers following up now diablo is having a bit of a trouble there uh whoa that very nice what he went for Brit? Oh, come on, man. I'm going to Void Prison there. Uh, Sonya getting caught. A uh, lot of people getting caught. Not much follow up damage. Zombie while trapping Diablo. Uh, no Raven Ravenous Spirit as well. Um, Fear and Sound going down. Actually, they are running a double support combo. I just now uh, noticed. Uh, and this is going pretty bad for us. I'm barely going to survive there. And... Uh, I'm going to state my mind here. Uh, about the ultimate choices of Diablo and Nazebo. Uh, guess Diablo misclicked. Um, usually, Ravenous Spirit actually is a pretty good source of damage. When it comes to a fall of a Void Prison, but I guess it's pretty risky versus a Muradin and a Sonya that can stun you. Uh, I can't blame him that much for the Gargantum because it's also an ultimate that can deal damage and has some nice uh, wave clear potential uh, on this map. Uh, we're going to try to uh, now do some very significant damage. I'm going to get the Vala at least, which is pretty nice. Another Q on the Muradin. And we're going to try to secure this next beacon. Now, the thing about Void Prison Diablo combo is that the Apocalypse is a very heavy uh, combo trigger for the Void Prison because the st because first of all, Diablo's animation on the Apocalypse is a bit slower timed, which allows you to patiently wait for that to happen and also for you to reset some of your cooldowns in the meantime. It's also much easier to react to. Uh, another team fight engaging here. Sonya going spinning around with the Berserker. I'm trying to retreat here a bit because uh, Nazi is not with us. Uh, I'm going to four man Void Prison here. We're going to try to uh, get the Sonya. We're going to get her. Uh, she did to no vision instead of hiding the Void Prison. More fear and silence. Diablo getting pretty low. Uh, Nazibo came from the side and we're going to. Uh, pick up a lot of the kills. I'm going to go for Shroud of Anu. Now I see a low Val. I'm going to try to go towards her. Low Warrior as well. Going to... Eh, going to secure another two kills there with the Cassian. Murdered now. Last man standing. Just going to finish him out. And I'm now at finished quest 10 stack. Grim Task. 50% ability power. Awesome. Now, usually with... Zero to actually go for the spell shield on level 13. In most cases. Uh, but in their situation, spell damage isn't the hardest hitting thing they have. I mean, they have some, some kind of decent spell damage. Uh, 
But generally with two supports, they don't have that much of a burst follow up. They have more of a sustained damage with Sonya. So Shroudo of Aduna allows me to uh, take some damage in short periods of time without getting punished with uh, for my HP. So as you can saw there, I engaged on Malfurion on the towers, took some damage, my Shroud of Adun took that damage, and now I have another Shroud of Adun to work with. Uh, there's going to be another fight there, I'm going to toss some damages on the side. Cassian doing some very nice damage there, Diablo as well. Uh, I'm sitting on the edge here, uh, waiting for my Void Prison. I'm waiting for the moment, 2 seconds cooldown, I'm pinging for my team. And I'm way, way looking for a window to engage here. Now Diablo going a bit deep there, I'm going to get stunned. I see an opportunity going to 3 man uh, on the Vawa. Ooh, nice bread there. Uh, Morphina is going to not be able to silence there because of a Brightwing Polymorph. I'm just trying my best to deal damage, but our team seems pretty well on HP. And them having two supports is uh, allowing them to sustain on the fight pretty well. Our team is actually slowly going down there. Oh, second man down, that's not very good. I think Brightwing might be able to escape here. No, he's still far behind now to blink out yeah well I think uh, we didn't have enough follow up damage on the void prison there firstly and secondly well Diablo did engage deeply but I did follow up with the void prison mm. should have waited with my W2 your OT yeah there was no force uh, no zombie wall there I mean I don't expect it to be honest but uh, this isn't League of Legends, I cannot fight the boss. Uh, man, how? What? I'm actually going to try to deal some damage there, but it's not going to be enough. So, I think this is a very stupid move, by the way, from Diablo. They can just come around the con corner and contest us on this camp, uh, which they aren't. It's pretty strange. Maybe I guess their team was a bit low and they decided to play it safe. Nonetheless, uh, they backed out, so that means that we can clear this boss pretty easily without much contestant. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, giving Nazibo some tip, I guess, that can help us actually secure a kill here. I went for the Void Slash Talent, which is core for this build, allowing you to have a very good burst. I'm going to demonstrate. I um, actually wasn't that good on the Sonya there, uh, but. Castle was going down. I'm, oh, I'm going, trying to release the Void Prison ASAP because I wasn't expecting the Diablo to toss the Lightning Bread. I'm just dealing a lot of damage, AOE damage around everyone. Uh, they managed to reset my Q this time. If you hit two enemies with your Q uh, with the Leo 16 talent, it gets cooldown redu reduction from 6 to 3 seconds. Uh, so it allows you to consistently push your sustained damage but sometimes I just cannot hit it properly I'm going to secure one Q there uh, I might have missed my Q again on the Uriel thanks to Diablo and beacons are up I'm going to land a W on Muradin there coach W and <laughs> we're going to secure another Q and timers on level 60 are pretty decent here that is going to allow us to have some very nice safe pressure to secure those beacons the Zivo, I think, yeah, he should, he's retreating there uh, very nicely. So, their team is actually going to engage here. I'm um, just trying to scare the Vow with my damage. The Zivo, very nice one, the Malfurion. And I'm going to try to sneak around here to secure the kill. Uh, but he has a vision one. I'm still going to blink in, but it's not going to be enough range there. I'm pretty actually getting pretty well on mana and think I might decide to yep recall for that mana. Mm. I really need that mana for the team fight because I need to constantly put out my Q damage uh, as much as possible. So that's how you play mage uh, zero two. You blink in, Q blink out. If there are a lot of melee focusing some of your assassins, you Q around them. For the sustained damage and just try to stay out of harm as much as possible now of course the first and most important thing is for you to actually engage with a void prison uh, to initiate a fight i see a diablo going on the Moradin. i'm going to form and void prison there and zombie wall landing there diablo lightning bread and just shit ton of damage going on the enemy team we are taking some beating as well but uh we're just going to going to 
Land the kill, blink out, Diablo with a nice toss on the Moridian and this is going to be 5 main wipe with over 5 of us alive. This moment right here was worthy of me making this video guys, I just really wanted to show you. Uh, the man with the parachute, parachute is going to fly with the GG and guys this is going to be an Overmind 2 game. Now Zero is going to get the MVP. I guess he pulled out a lot of uh, sustain and siege damage. I'm going to have a Dominator 17 heroes. I think this is when you kill 70 heroes in a row. Uh, so that's pretty nice. I'm, uh, I did cut out the video uh, earlier so I couldn't man manage to show the talents. But if you follow up the game play, you probably know what I have built there. So that's going to be everything from me from today, guys. I wanted to show you a very nice 0 2 game. So thank you for watching and until next time, stay righteous.